Hey there guys, so today what I want to do is I want to mess around with some of the mini PCs that I have and I want to see what is going to work well with an Oculink setup or not. Pretty much since I got this M.2 to Oculink adapter, I have been having a lot of fun messing around with this on different mini PCs. And this is one of the ones that I've been the most interested in messing around with. If you haven't seen my video on this mini PC, it's one of the worst ones I've ever taken a look at, mostly because this chassis is uh, so so weirdly made without any consideration whatsoever for cooling that this thing essentially thermal throttles doing pretty much anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of this chassis and I'm just going to use it bare as a board. I've already done that before and it definitely makes a difference in terms of the cooling and I want to essentially pair it with this adapter here. Now this is going to be a bit more of a challenge because of the fact that it only has one M.2 slot. That means that this NVMe drive that we have here is gonna have to come out. And well, what are we left with in terms of storage? Well, if you look in here, you can see it has this little SATA adapter that you can essentially plug into and use a SATA SSD. So as a boot drive, I'm going to be using this team group SATA SSD that is actually absolutely awful. I hate this thing, but it's the only SATA SSD that I have laying around and it should be fine enough for this project here. So let's pop this thing out. Now, the thing that I'm most interested about testing this system with is that it's the first Intel system that I've ever used Oculink with. You know, since this has the i9-12900HK, it should pair pretty well with a GPU like this, but we'll have to see. Ooh, okay, good thing I didn't yank hard on it or anything. All right, so here is the bare board. You can see what we're working with here. And this is really the cooling system that just gets absolutely no ventilation at all from here. So it will actually just work better for us like this. Now, in terms of the layout, what I really need to do is figure out if I can essentially have this part right here facing down with both the Oculink and the SATA adapter plugged in. This right here is the SATA thing. Okay, yeah, it should be doable with them upside down. All right, let's see about plugging in the SATA. As for the Oculink GPU, it is going to be the RX 7600 XT. All right, let's see if this setup actually boots up. So it took a lot longer to get this up and running than I had originally anticipated. I really didn't run into any hardware issues except for the fact that I was running into an odd issue with my graphics card. Essentially, it kept telling me that the driver for it just would not install properly and there was not really anything I could do. Eventually, what fixed my problem was just swapping over from the RX 7600 XT to the RTX 2070 Super. Almost all the issues I've ever had with Oculink have been solved with just switching over from AMD to NVIDIA or Intel. So I'm not really 100% sure what was causing the issue here, but I managed to get it to work with the RTX 2070 Super pretty much immediately, so that's what I used for the testing. But the first game that I ended up testing with this setup was Hitman World of Assassination running with the ultra graphics settings, no RT features though. And we are using DLSS at the performance preset. Guys, when I use DLSS on my computer, I, I use it with the performance preset. With the latest models that they use, the, the Transformer models, at 1440p, I just legitimately really can't tell a difference during gameplay. So I like to test it, especially with the 2070 Super at the performance preset for DLSS unless I see a quality issue. But the level of performance that we were getting out of this was pretty spectacular and we only saw bad performance in the scenarios where the CPU is really getting hammered here. But even then the i9-12900HK pairs really really well with the RTX 2070 Super and we're getting a far more playable experience than we ever would be with the built-in Iris Xe graphics. And do keep in mind that in all the games that I use DLSS LSS in, I am using it with the Transformer model, and that's what I'm using here with Red Dead Redemption 2. This is running with the ultra graphic settings, but we are using DLSS set to performance, but it is performance with the Transformer model. So while we aren't getting as massive an, of an increase in performance, visually speaking, it looks spectacular. And at these graphic settings, we are able to get a really nice FPS average with 1% lows that pretty much tell us this is going to be a very smooth 
very consistent experience. And although that i9 is reaching some pretty high temperatures right now, the benefit is that it isn't thermal throttling, which is what would end up happening before if we were using this in its normal chassis. You know, it's kind of funny because if the company made, that made the GH9 ended up just releasing this motherboard on its own and didn't even bother with making the case, it would be a more compelling product than what it is right now. You know, if you could buy this motherboard for essentially around 250 to 300 US dollars, you could potentially make a pretty interesting compact computer. As you can see here with Marvel Rivals running at the low in-game graphics settings with DLSS at the performance performance preset. The result that we get out of this is spectacular. You're not going to run into any real issues here though. If you were looking for a really high refresh rate gaming experience, you're definitely going to need something more powerful than the 2070 Super. Really, Black Myth Wukong was one of the only games that I ended up seeing any real issues with, and that's because it defaulted to wanting to use the high graphics preset, and I definitely went along with it. And with a DLSS target resolution of 66%, which should be roughly what you would expect out of a performance preset, the result wasn't great. An FPS average of 43 with 1% lows of 33 is just not a great result overall, though I can't really say if that's the 2070 Super that is just being the the limiting factor here or if the whole oculink setup itself was a problem i think what this is showing me is that i definitely need to upgrade what graphics card i use with my oculink setups because if the amd cards are going to constantly be giving me issues i think i'm better off just investing my money into something more powerful on the nvidia side of things all right well that was actually a lot of fun to mess around with though things did get more complicated than they really had any right to be what i'm finding is that with at least Oculink setups, most of the issues that I have ever ran into have been related to using an AMD GPU. I don't really know what it is, but this is at this point the third time that I've had a issue that was completely resolved by just swapping over to an NVIDIA GPU. Now, I also will say that I have never run into any issues with using an Intel GPU in an Oculink setup, but I also have far less experience with that. Still, consistently, AMD has been the problem. That said, this has been really fun, specifically because we have essentially turned what was a very terrible, very poorly thought out mini PC into something that is surprisingly powerful. You know, we're able to do 1440p gaming. What I'm learning here, though, is that I really just need to sell off my AMD GPUs that I'm not personally using and just get myself a more powerful powerful NVIDIA GPU just for these types of setups because the 2070 Super is pretty weak by today's standards and the 7600 XT is just not going to be that useful to me if every time I try to use it, it ends up giving me some kind of problem. But anyways, I hope you found this video fun and interesting. If you did, be sure to subscribe. Of course, you can also become a channel member for as little as $1 a month. I'll catch you guys in the next one.